Hey guys, welcome back. So today uh, I'm going to talk about specifically about this pre-request script in Postman, right? So even though we have uh, seen how to use pre-request script in many of my videos, but still I wanted to talk it separately because um, I have seen people getting confused on when to use a pre-request script and when to use the normal test scripts in Postman, right? So we are going to run through uh, what is pre-request script and then we'll see it with a example on how you can include pre-request script and what's the dif real difference between pre-request script and the test scripts in Postman, right? So talking generally, uh, pre-request script is nothing but it's a JavaScript, right? So whatever um, you write in pre-request script is written in JavaScript. And then um, the major uh, functionality of pre-request script, it, it works like a precondition for your API request, right? So whatever you write inside the pre-request script, it executes before your request is actually run. Okay, so you can also call it as a pre-processing script or a before run condition, right? So in many test frameworks, if you have used something like test ng, or J unit, you have these annotations which are add before and add, add after, right? Or add before test, add after test. So these are nothing but these are preconditions and post conditions, right? So you want something to be executed before you execute your main script, right? So that's when you use this, these conditions. And prerequisite script falls in the same category, okay? So you can use prerequisite script for many things. Um, Mainly you can set the variable values, right? So it can be any variable, your collection variable, your environment variable, right? Or a simple local local variable. Um, then you can also set the parameter values or headers into your um, API requests using this pre-request script, right? Now there are different other uses, but these are some of the um, main usages which you can use pre-request script for. And then uh, coming to the difference between pre-request script and test, right? So when should you use a pre-request script and when should you use your test scripts? Now, one difference is pretty clear from the description itself that pre-request script, it executes before your API request is executed, right? So, and the test scripts, they execute only after your API request is processed successfully by, by the server, then only your test run and validate the response, right? So tests always run after your API request is processed while pre-request script always runs before your API request is even sent to the server, right? So that's the main difference between pre-request script and tests. So don't get confused and you should be using both separately depending on what situation uh, or what scenario you are currently automating on your APIs, okay? So saying that, let's pick up an example and see what is pre-request script and how you can use it in your Postman. So for that, um, I'm going to use one of our weather APIs, which we used it earlier as well. This time around, I'm going to use the um, get current weather by zip code, right? So previously used uh, by city, by providing a city name. This time we are going to provide a zip code, okay? So this is the API call and uh, this is the API response, which you'll be getting, okay? Now let's head back to our Postman. So this is our weather API collection. We have one, one API in this, one API request. So I'm going to go ahead and add another request here, okay? So this is my request. So get weather, get weather by zip code. Okay, and I'm going to add it to the collection. Then let's go to this request. And let's try to use, so we'll use this simple example uh, for this particular API request, right? So it has got a zip code and then the country. So you need to pass it this way, right? And after this, um, I need to pass this app ID, right? So I'll pick it from my previous request but I'm going to show you another way of doing it. 
it so here in the pass and so that it becomes a query parameter right so we have two query parameters one is app id one is zip code okay so what i'm going to do is rather than passing the app id here directly um i'm going to use a variable here okay so it's not set anywhere but i'm going to set it okay app id and i'm not going to use any environment variables for this app id what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a prerequisite script to set a local variable for this app id right so before this request gets executed this prerequisite script should set the app id value then only this request will be successful right so if you send this request now obviously it will fail right so as you can see it is showing 401 unauthorized because we haven't provided any api key okay so that's expected so let's set an environment variable now and you can use pm.environment.set right um, you can put the variable key here which is nothing but app id and then you can pass on the value here right so this is not the ideal way of doing it but um, I, I wanted to show you how you can use your prerequisite script okay so this will set our app id now if um if you want to actually see um how whether that request script is getting executed before your api request is sent right so how you can do that so you can use something called console.log um to print this value right uh, when it is getting executed on your logs so uh, just use pm.environment.get right so after this will get the value of uh, the app id so right so this is our console.log right so in postman uh, if you want to see the logs uh, while you are sending any uh, api request or anything you are working on apis you can head back to this console and it will give you the logs for everything which is being uh, sent or received in postman right so it will give it in the console right and uh, we are printing something on the console so we should get this app id okay so let's go ahead and send this now hopefully this will pass now okay so we got a status 200 okay and we got the response okay right now let's look at the console logs just to see when exactly this uh, prerequisite script is getting executed right so if you can see the console log uh, let me expand this right and this is our get request okay so this is the get request uh, request headers response headers and the response body okay so everything is printed on the console logs if you want to verify anything and if you notice before the get request there is uh, id app id right so this we, this is what we are printing so even before uh, we send the get request right prerequisite script is getting called or getting executed this can be made sure by just printing this console.log so first it executes the prerequisite script and then it executes the get request right so this is the first thing which gets executed so keep that in mind and accordingly you can design your scenarios okay now just to make um, the difference pretty clear let me um let me just uh add a test here right so that we can see the difference when this is getting executed so for that i will just use a simple let me simple status code right so if the status code is okay or not so let me do that okay and then i'm going to also print another log here right so test was executed right so just to make sure that um, we are getting the right console uh, con log in the console okay so let's send this now and let's go to our console 
So this is the first execution. If you are not sure, then uh, there is a clear option here in the console.log, right? So just clear your logs and then send your request. And now you will see the pre-request script got generated first. Okay, so this was printed, then the get request and then the test. Okay, so this is the sequence of events which happens in Postman. First, your pre-request script gets executed, then your API request and then your test. Right. So that's the most important part uh, to remember uh, when you are using or when you are working with pay request script and tests in Postman. Okay. So I hope uh, this cleared everything uh, regarding the pay request script and the difference between that and tests. Right. So if you find this video interesting, please like and share along. Also, don't forget to uh, subscribe to our channel, QA Script. Right. So you can get to many many videos like this so we have got um, many different videos on different automation tools so uh, just visit our channel and subscribe to to that channel so that you can get access to all these uh, different playlists so keep watching and see you in the next video